Well, forgive me, but uh, I decided to go out back and do the audio for this video on the back porch. It's just nice and comfortable out here. But uh, this is my first time ever canning dried beans. So I've watched a lot on YouTube. I've talked to a lot of people that have done it. And this is what I came up with. So what I did here was I soaked these red beans and water for about 30 minutes on this batch and then I put half a cup into pint jars and uh, a half teaspoon of uh, pinto bean seasoning into the water and that's all I did well one small piece of my homemade buckboard bacon in each one of them about half a strip of bacon and I pressure canned those at 11 psi for 65 minutes they come out very good, but they needed a little bit of salt. Um, so, I wanted to try that out before I actually did a, a full video on it. So, uh, now we're going to start into the video because these came out pretty dead gum good. Okay, this is my first attempt at uh, canning dry beans. And these are some red beans that I did. They look pretty good. I brought one over to my mom and dad and tried it out. And it tasted very good, needed a little bit of salt. So what I'm doing now is I'm canning the rest of the red beans, four on the left, and two can't jars of pinto beans on the right. And I got some of the homemade uh, buckboard bacon that I made last week, and I put a bunch in there to kind of give it a smoky pork taste as well. And now I'm going to top it off with uh, chicken broth. And yeah, it's store-brought Swanson. But I'm going to top that off and then we're going to pressure can this. So stand by. Okay, now I'm adding one tablespoon of pinto bean seasoning to all the beans. And uh, I used a, a container and a half of uh, chicken stock to get them to this level. And I'll top them off with water after this. And I'm going to add a tablespoon of vinegar to each one of them. Yeah. Oops, spilled a little bit. Well, I ran out of kosher salt, so I added a little bit of garlic salt to this. Uh, because the one I tried with my mom and dad earlier, it needed a little bit of salt, and I thought a little bit extra flavor. So, uh, garlic salt it is. I was going to put kosher salt in it, let the natural flavors come out, but hey, who doesn't need a little garlic? Now I'm going to top these off with water. Okay, so I topped them off. I wiped the lids down with a vinegar covered rag and uh, put the lids on finger tight. Now time to put them into the pressure cooker. Okay, all the jars are in there, but I was short one jar. So I'm putting an empty one in the middle to hold its place for the others. Also going to add a splash of white vinegar in there to keep the jars clear so it'll get fogged up. And let me put some more water in there so we got enough for the pressure cooking. Why is this table not smushed together correctly? Why? Because okay, now I'm going to put the pressure cooking lid on. Oh, 
only goes on one particular way. And I always have trouble finding it. There we go. And it's there. Now we turn the stove on high and wait. It'll start venting here. Once it starts venting consistent steam, we'll uh, let it vent for 10 minutes, then we'll put the cap on it. And uh, when the pressure gets to 11 PSI, we'll try to hold 11 PSI or a little bit over for 90 minutes. That's how long you have to cook these beans for uh, quart jars. You have them at a right angle, correct? Well, we've uh, left the pint jars on the counter and I've put the quart jars four quart jars of red beans and two quart jars of uh, pinto beans into the uh, pressure cooker and we're going to go to 11 psi and i just put the cap on this thing it had been venting for about 10 minutes and i put the cap on it uh, and the pressure immediately jumped started climbing and went up this is me taking a picture uh, just before the temperature got up and before i started doing a video but basically the recipe on this was uh, one full cup of uh, soaked red beans. I had soaked for about four hours. And one full cup of dried pinto beans. Now it's not in each jar. The red beans were in their own jar and the pinto beans were in their own jar. Uh, we'll see at the end the difference. Uh, but once you soak them for quite a bit, you probably need to increase the amount of beans you put in there. Uh... I probably needed to cut the amount of pinto beans down to three quarters of a cup to uh, each quart jar. Uh, but one tablespoon of pinto bean seasoning per jar, about um, half a teaspoon of garlic salt in each jar. Uh, I put about one and a half strips of bacon in each jar. That's my homemade buckboard bacon, so there's hardly any fat in it. There is some and uh, one tablespoon of clear distilled vinegar and then I wiped the rims of the jars off, sealed those and uh, put them in the pressure cooker and I pressure cooked these for 90 minutes at 11 psi and that did creep up to 13 or so and because my stove wouldn't go any lower so I turned the uh, stove off until the pressure got back down to 11 or 12 and then I turned it back on low and that was generally taking about 11 minutes to 15 minutes to get back up to about 13 psi and then I would do it again now we're going to continue with the video well it finally started blowing good steam so I let it go for 10 minutes and then I capped it now it's about 7 psi I'm letting it go to about 11 which will let it cook at a higher temperature. So I'll, I'll let you know when we get there. Okay, we're at 10 PSI. Going to 11. So I went ahead and started the timer for 90 minutes for the quart jars. Well, we had company last night, so I couldn't finish the filming. But this is what happened afterwards. The four cans on the left are red beans and as you can tell they didn't swell up as much as the pinto beans the pinto beans swell up all the way to the top so that's the difference between one cup of semi-soaked uh, red beans and one cup of dried pinto beans probably needs to be three quarters of a cup <laughs> but this is my first time doing dried beans canning them so i think the pinto beans look real good Red beans, I need a little more beans in them. That's got chunks of my homemade ham in them. We tried uh, one can of the, uh, or one jar of the uh, pinto beans out of the pint jars yesterday. They were pretty darn good. They needed a little extra salt. But, there we are. I think you can do it too. As I said in the video, this is what happened with the beans after uh, they had been canned and set out on the counter overnight. Um, 
the red beans didn't swell up too much more because they had already soaked for quite a while. The pinto beans, which hadn't soaked at all, really, really sucked up a lot of fluid and went to the top. But I see some uh, fat kind of that has congealed in between some of the beans, so that's good. Uh, so why do you want to can beans like this? Well, one is convenience. If you're running sports like we do all the time, or by the time I pick my daughter up from school, I've only got an hour, hour and a half before it's time for me to go to bed so I can get up and go to work. It's easier for me to have something ready to go on the counter that I can just dump out. With the red beans there, I love red beans and rice. So it's got the bacon with the ham pieces in it. All I really need to do is to drain the juice off and uh, put the equivalent amount of rice to soak up that juice cook the rice together with that juice, and then throw the beans on top of it, I now have homemade red beans and rice and then season it to my taste. Pinto beans, I love eating pinto beans, especially with some green onions or uh, yellow onions cut up in the inside, stirred together with a little cornbread. Uh, but it just makes meals a lot more convenient when you have things ready to go. Uh, and it's quite a bit cheaper than uh, purchasing cans so y'all have good luck think what else i've got a choice for my next video and i need your help to help decide this leave a comment below do you want to see me uh shoot the 458 socom or do you want to see me can chicken unless something happens with the goats then i'm going to come back and do that